Sorry, so when the trouble was now much, solution was not coming from anywhere, my husband told me, why not watch Emmanuel TV? Try and be watching it and see what this man is even talking about that you are saying switch off, switch off. So one day I was alone. I said to myself, let me even see what this man is saying. So I on the TV. Alone, I was watching it. I watched it throughout that day. I say, ah, this man is saying the truth too. <laughs> it's like I've been watching this, you know, because it's really touching me what he's doing, the way he delivers people from their troubles. I started listening to testimonies of people. And I listened to a testimony of a woman and the husband that waited so long, more than I waited. And finally, when they got, came here and Prophet T.B. Joshua prayed for them, they gave birth to twins. I said, no, ah, me too, I will give birth, for sure. So I started watching Emmanuel TV. Seriously, I no longer switch it off. At night, I would tell my husband, don't switch it off, oh. leave it on. We'll watch it throughout the night. So I became addicted to it. So one day, I told my husband, ah, I'll go to synagogue. I'll go and get this morning, new morning water they are talking about. Let me even see. So I came. I was opportune. Daddy prayed for me. And I went back. I was given the new morning water. I ministered it. I continued ministering it, praying along with Daddy on TV. And a day came, I had a dream where I saw the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua. And I beckoned on him and I told him, please, I don't know what my problem is. I have gone to test nothing. But I saw key in my wedding cake. That is the only thing I know. And he said to me, hold your tummy with your hands. And I did in that dream. And he said, go, you are okay. So that same month, that same month, I took him. I never expected it. It was a surprise because I need to ask. And one thing is that that very day, I visited a doctor. The doctor said, since nothing is wrong with you, go and take antibiotic. He gave me antibiotic. But when I came home, I heard a voice that said, don't take this antibiotic. Go for a test. So I went for a test and behold, it was positive. I Yes, people of God, we have listened to our sister here, and we can see that never a situation Christ Jesus cannot turn around. All what we need is to believe. And going by her testimony, after a change of heart, God Almighty met her at the point of our needs. And tell us, madam, you will. After you saw the man of God in your dream, you came here and you were opportune to get the new morning water. You went back home. Tell us what happened. When I got home, I met with my husband. And the same month, I took him. Hallelujah. People of God, put your hands together for Christ Jesus. So tell us, during your pregnancy, how did God Almighty took care of you? Yes, during my pregnancy, I no longer see myself being chased by a masquerade in the dream. I no longer see myself eating in the dream with dead people. I no longer see myself having sex in the dream. Everything turned around. This time around, I started seeing myself in the synagogue church of all nations being prayed for every now and then. And... When I wanted to give birth, successfully God did it. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are here today with your wonderful baby. Tell us the name of your baby. Yes, something happened. When I gave birth to this boy, I became so addicted to Emmanuel TV that I now like or love the name T.B. Joshua. <laughs> so I told myself I would like my son to be T Joshua. I like that name. <laughs> this is the picture of when I was pregnant. 
And also when I gave birth. Okay, viewers, you can see her. She's the one right there on the screen of our television when she was pregnant. Hallelujah. Continue your testimony. This is also when I gave birth to my lovely boy. This is his picture when I gave birth to him. That very minute I gave birth. So with what God Almighty has done for you, now God has made you a mother. Tell us, what is your promise to God? How are you going to train your baby? I will train my baby in the way of the Lord. I will make sure he grew, knowing God as the Lord and Savior. And what advice do you have for people listening to you? My advice is, especially those that I would say we were astray because a lot of things were said to me that really pissed me off from watching Emmanuel TV or hearing anything about Prophet TV Joshua. Please, don't listen. I am a testimony. He's a man sent to us in this generation. I call him my daddy. Thank you very much for that advice. And we encourage you that now you have been blessed, you have been delivered. Continue to walk in the light of your testimony and train your baby in the way of the Lord. So that when he grew up, it will not depart from him. Amen. Nous venons tout juste d'entendre le merveilleux témoignage de cette femme. Elle dit que voilà, après son mariage, un beau jour, elle découvrit que voilà, il y avait deux clés louches dans le gâteau de son mariage. Elle dit que c'est là que le, les problèmes commencèrent. Elle devint stérile et les docteurs disent que voilà, elle était en bonne santé, ne savait pas pourquoi elle ne pouvait pas concevoir. Elle dit que son époux, son époux était un fidèle d'Emmanuel TV, mais elle n'aimait du tout pas Emmanuel TV ni le prophète Tibi Joshua. Elle dit que voilà, à la fin, elle commença à regarder Emmanuel TV. Elle fut touchée par les témoignages des femmes qui ne pouvaient pas concevoir, mais à la fin, cette femme a donné naissance à des jumeaux. Elle fut inspirée, le Saint-Esprit touche à son cœur, elle dit que voilà, ensuite, euh, elle vint à la scoale, elle a eu la grâce en tant que partenaire de recevoir la nouvelle eau du matin et le même jour qu'elle reçut la nouvelle eau du matin, elle rêva du prophète Tibi Joshua disant « Tu es libre maintenant » et elle dit que ce même jour, elle raconte à son époux et le même mois, elle fut tombée enceinte et maintenant, comme vous voyez, elle est venue avec son miracle dans ses bras, miracle qu'elle a reçu à travers de l'eau du matin dans la présence de Dieu. Elle encourage tout le monde de garder foi, les spectateurs rendent gloire à Dieu pour ce merveilleux témoignage. Escuchamos otro motivador y construidor testimonio en la vida de esta mujer que cuenta que por muchos años ella sufrió de esterilidad. Ella y su esposo fueron a muchos hospitales en busca de solución a su problema y a pesar de los análisis, que los análisis decían que ella estaba bien, que su vientre estaba bien, que su esposo estaba bien, no lograban quedar en embarazo. Así que ella cuenta que su esposo solía ver Emanuel TV, pero que ella no le gustaba porque en ese entonces ella no creía, pero que un día se sentó a ver Emanuel TV con su esposo y se volvió una adicta a Emanuel TV y desde ese momento ella tomó la decisión de venir a la sinagoga y a todas las naciones y por gracia de Dios recibió el agua de la mañana, al regresar a casa se lo ministró, estuvo con su esposo y dice que en ese mismo mes, pensando que ella tenía otra eh, dolencia fue al médico y ellos le dijeron que nada pasaba y le enviaron eh, antibióticos, pero al regresar a casa, ella dice que una voz le dijo que se hiciera una prueba de embarazo, cuando se hizo esa prueba de embarazo fue positiva y para la gloria y la honra de Jesucristo, después de muchos años de esterilidad, ella hoy está cargando a su bebé, que a través del poder de Jesús en el nuevo agua de la mañana eh, le dio esa bendición de tener a su hijo, hoy ella le da toda la gloria y la honra a Jesucristo por este maravilloso milagro, continuamos
to their testimony. Could you please tell us your name and your testimony? Podría por favor decirnos su nombre, de dónde es y quién es la persona que está a su lado y compartir su maravilloso testimonio. Yo me llamo Joaquín Zuenzue. Vengo de Guinea Ecuatorial con mi esposa a compartir eh, la gloria de Dios en nuestra vida. My name is Joaquín Suesue. Uh, the person next to me is my wife and we are coming from Equatorial Guinea. Sí. Pues eh, mi vida conocía muchos desafíos, muchos estancamientos, problemas financieros. Incluso en mi vida como político las cosas no iban bien. Entonces en 2013 participé en unas elecciones municipales en mi país, cosa que no llegué a ganar. Y me desanimé bastante. Entonces, des, me desanimé y dije que no iba a volver a, a participar, porque gastamos mucho dinero y no ganamos. Entonces... Um, eh, I was facing a lot of challenges in my life. I was facing a lot of stagnation, financial limitation, and as a politician also I was facing a lot of failure. In the 2013, I ran, I went for election uh, in the municipality in my country, and I failed. I was very discouraged because we spent a lot of money and many things we did, but at the end we did not win. So that uh, this me a lot. Entonces, con ese desánimo, decidimos venir a la, a la SCOAN. Llegamos aquí, el profeta ahorró con nosotros y nos dio el nuevo agua de la mañana. So, since we were so disappointed, we decided to come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. And when we came here, Prophet TB Joshua prayed for us, and we had the grace to receive the new morning water. Entonces, volvimos a nuestro país, y nuestra intención cuando vinimos aquí no era para volver a participar en las elecciones porque habíamos perdido mucho dinero y no, no llegamos a ganar. And when we came here, uh, our intention was not, or the reason that we came here was not to run election again, because we were already disappointed. We were not interested on that again. A nuestra gran sorpresa, cuando volvimos al país, desde la Oficina Nacional ya, nos, ya me llamaban para volver a depositar mis documentos. Y yo les decía que no estoy interesado porque no tengo medios económicos para seguir Gastando. But for my surprise, when I went back to my country, I received a phone call from the national office uh, of the political party and encouraged me to run, to go for election again. And at that moment, I was not interested on in that because I was already disappointed for my past experience. Entonces, con la insistencia de la llamada que me hacían desde la oficina central, mi mujer me animó a que fuera a depositar la documentación. Entonces preparé el expediente, oramos, aplicamos el agua en la mañana y me, me olvidó un punto. Fuimos los últimos en depositar los documentos porque todo el mundo ya lo había depositado. And since they continue calling me and telling me that I should go for that elections, my wife encouraged me and told me, uh, let's go, let's do it to see what happened. So we prepared the documents to submit it, and we were the last people to submit this document. But before taking them to the office, we pray and we minister the new morning water on that. Uh, sorry to cut you, sir. We would like to understand, when you say you tried to contest and you were the last to submit, how many people were actually involved in the um, contesting of the team? Cuando dices que al participar, al entregar tu expediente, fuiste el último, ¿de cuántas personas estaban participando en esas elecciones? Aproximadamente 30 personas. They were, they were about 30 people. You mean you have 30 contestants to contest with at that time? Entonces quiere decir que usted estaba eh, concursando con 30 personas. Sí. So what now happened? ¿Y qué sucedió? Entonces, eh, después de que depositamos el expediente, tal como les he dicho anteriormente, nombré a mi esposa directora de mi campaña, porque no podía nombrar a otra persona fuera de ella porque no teníamos muchos recursos económicos. Entonces ella es la que se ocupó de mi campaña 
hasta que Dios intervino positivamente dándonos la ganada. So um, we submit our file, our document, and the campaign, the political campaign started. So I, I named, I appointed my wife as the director of my campaign, since we did not have enough uh, financial resources for that. So, uh, but we saw how God intervened in our matter because we won the elections. Shall we put our hands together for Christ Jesus? Put your hands together. Indeed, this is amazing. Who can justly do this? It is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. People of God, you haven't listened to anything yet. Continue, sir. Entonces, eh, ganamos las elecciones y fui el número uno de la lista de entre los 30 que, que participamos en las elecciones. So, we won the elections and I was the number one out of the, train, the, the 30 contestants in that elections. Glory be to God. We thank God for what he has done in your life and could you please... Continue with your testimony. What now finally happened? What is your position today? Entonces, como postulábamos como concejales del ayuntamiento, y como fui el número uno de la lista, me subieron al rango del alcalde presidente del distrito número cuatro de mi, de mi ciudad. Since uh, that elections were for uh, the local government in my municipality, in my country, and I was the number one out of these 30 contestants, they promoted me to the position of mayor of one of the districts in uh, the city, in the capital of Equatorial Guinea. Shall we put our hands together for Christ Jesus? Put your hands together! In a summary, we all listened to what he said. He had these challenges. He already gave up concerning this election because he believed there was no way. But God made a way where there seems to be no way. And that is why he's standing here today to testify to the goodness of God. Shall we put our hands together for Christ Jesus? So without much campaign, being the last to submit your document, because at that time you never wanted to go ahead with it, tell us, what is, who are, how can we address you now? What is your position, sir? Sabiendo que en, tu, en estas elecciones fuiste el último en entregar los documentos, que no tenías una campaña política como los demás, ¿cómo debemos de llamarte ahora? ¿Cuál es tu posición? Yo soy el alcalde del distrito de Malabo, número cuatro. Today I am the mayor of district number four in Malabo, Equatorial Guinea. Shall we put our hands together for Christ Jesus? Sir, did you believe you could win? Was there any belief then that you were going to win? ¿Tú tenías alguna creencia en que ibas a ganar esas elecciones? Como persona, las probabilidades de ganar eran muy pocas. Pero creyendo... En Dios y en el profeta TV Joshua pudimos participar sabiendo que Dios puede inter va a intervenir en nuestro asunto. The probabilities for me to win, they were very, very low. But thank God and the power of God through the new morning water and the prophet TV Joshua, we could have the victory. Could you please explain to us the documents on the board? ¿Puedes por favor explicar los documentos en el tablero? Sí. Eh, aquí tengo el, la credencial que certifica que eh, participé en las elecciones municipales y gané. Con este documento, siendo el número uno de la lista, me suben a rango de la alcalde de distrito. Aquí estoy jurando el cargo en presencia de las autoridades de mi país.
Uh, the first document is a uh, appointed letter that says that I was uh, I won the elections that I uh, won as a uh, council man in my uh, municipality and because I was the number one in these elections they uh, they gave me the position of mayor of one of the districts in uh, Malabo, Equatorial Guinea, and this picture uh, shows the uh, inauguration ceremony. And tell us, sir, what is the population of the district, sir? Dinos ahora, ¿cuál es la población a la cual tú estás a cargo? Aproximadamente estoy a cargo de una población de un millón y medio. I am in charge of 1.5 uh, million people. Shall we put our hands together for Christ Jesus? We would like to hear from your wife briefly. What do you want to say about what God has done in the life of your husband? Queremos escuchar rápidamente de parte de tu esposa qué tiene que decir sobre tu testimonio. Emmanuel, que realmente Dios nos ha bendecido porque estar que tener que enfrentar toda esa gente, 30 personas en la postulación, normalmente para nosotros como personas pero como personas que somos no nos iba a salir bien pero como pusimos nuestra fe en Dios y tuvimos la fe de que estábamos aquí en sinagoga y el profeta oró con nosotros entonces lo conseguimos uh, I really bless uh, the Lord and I thank God for this blessing because uh, among of these 30 people that was running these elections, the probability for us, they were very low. But because we put our faith in God and we came here to the Synagogue Church of All Nations and we trust in the God of Prophet T.B. Joshua, we could have our blessing. We, can, we could win these elections. We thank God for your life and we would like to encourage you that you stay true to Jesus Christ. Your testimony today has touched people's life. We believe there is no more God, no more miracle. We thank God for everything. So with what God has done in your life, continue to follow Him in Jesus' name. Damos gracias a Dios por sus vidas y les motivamos a que continúen siguiendo a Dios, confiando en Él y haciendo de la palabra de Dios el estándar para su vida en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amén. Nous venons tout juste d'entendre le merveilleux témoignage de ce couple qui vient de la Guinée équatoriale. Il dit qu'ils avaient beaucoup de défis de stagnation et cet homme, en tant que politicien, c'était très difficile. En 2013, il a perdu les élections municipales. Il dit qu'il a perdu beaucoup d'argent. Ceci a détruit sa carrière et décida d'abandonner la politique. Il vient à la et le prophète Tibi Joshua a pris à poulet reçu la nouvelle du matin de retour à son pays. Il reçut un appel du bureau national politique lui disant qu'il devait reposer sa candidature. Il refusa, mais sa femme l'encourageait. Il dit que voilà, il commençait à administrer la nouvelle du matin et il dit qu'il avait 30 autres candidat, il fut le dernier à soumettre sa candidature et par la grâce de Dieu, il dit qu'il a, il a entendu qu'il qu a gagné les élections il fut même classé premier, il dit qu'il rend gloire à Dieu pour la présence de Dieu dans la nouvelle du matin des spectateurs rendent gloire à Dieu comme maintenant il est le maire d'une des villes de la capitale de la Guinée équatoriale rendons gloire à Dieu pour ce extraordinaire et merveilleux témoignage, restez connectés pour la suite
the time you listen to this testimony, you will also give your testimony to the glory of God. So, madam, you are very much welcome to the presence of God. Tell us your name, where you are from, and your wonderful testimony. Good morning, church. Good morning, Good morning church. Good morning. My name is Noreen Mazala. I come from Tanzania, and I'm very happy to share this testimony with you all. It all started years ago, um, coming back home with a master's degree in business. I had a job. I was opportunity to get a job. But this job was not meeting ends meet. I had a normal job that did not satisfy, or rather, my salary was not enough to sustain my living. I couldn't, well, within a month, I would finish my salary, and yet still, I wouldn't really meet what I needed to do. Years passed by, I came to synagogue. And for how many years were you experiencing these stagnations, this disappointment, this, you're looking for breakthrough for how many years? For the past six years, really. For the past six years. Yes, the job was there. Um, people that were in front of me did not actually have the qualifications that I had. If I may say, I, had, I currently have Masters in Business Development Management uh, from a university from UK, and I had a job. People in front of me did not even have these Masters. The salary was not enough. So the, my qualifications did not really make me to have what I have. But after coming to synagogue, after praying with the man of God, after using this morning water, my life changed. My stagnation changed. 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 It took me time, but I believed. I went home, I used the morning water, I prayed the new morning water, I prayed with a man of God. I used the various medium um, on TV. I sprayed all over me. And because I was not really happy with what I was having, I was asking God to give me a new job. I was asking God for actually a promotion. You know, I was like, God, I'm your child, and I need something that will really make me happy, you know, to, make, to live according to what I really want to have. So I was actually asking for a promotion. But God just surprised me. It wasn't the promotion. A client of mine that I used to serve actually asked for my CV. He asked for my CV. He's actually um, a French guy. And he gave my CV to his, his fellow um, Dutch friend. So they looked at my CV and they called me in for an interview. They called me in for an interview in two weeks' time. If they flew in somebody from Holland to actually interview me in. This is in Tanzania, this is in Dar es Salaam. A person from Holland came to interview me. It is not in my expectations to actually have that. I didn't even dream of that. So, after this interview, the job landed in front of me. I was To God's glory, I was given um, a position as a business development manager in Tanzania looking after three countries. I currently look after Tanzania, after Kenya, after Uganda. What I do as a business developer, I look at construction business. Um, developing the nation, you know, constructing roads, constructing airports, constructing um, hospitals. It's not like I've actually, I'm not an engineer, no. I only have business management. This is all God's grace. This is all the benefits of actually coming to praying along with this ministry. Um, the level I'm in, it is just peculiar. As a lady, as a woman, I enter meetings, I meet um, the ministers of these nations, the permanent secretaries of these nations. We're sitting down discussing how best can we develop these nations, what roads are important, what airports need building. This is what I'm doing for God's glory. Shall we put our hands together for our Lord Jesus?
Remember her sister said she was not even looking for this. But God gave her what she was not even expecting. Meaning God took her from grass to grace. And today she is a living testimony of the transformation of God through the medium of the new morning water. Once again let us put our hands together for our Lord Jesus. Yes, you said after ministering the new morning water, you started having meetings upon meetings with people at the top. Can you explain to us more about the meetings you are having and currently what position are you holding? By God's grace, I'm a business development manager with a company called BAM International. Um, I meet prime ministers. Um, permanent secretaries, ministers, to discussing development of the nation, the various nations which are Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, um, for God's glory. And do you have any word of advice for those who are listening to you? You know, yesterday you were full of trouble, pain, you know, looking for the face of God for this breakthrough. And today, God has actually took you there. Now you are there at the moment. You are testifying to the glory of God. Can you give a word of advice for those who are listening to you now? Madam, God didn't just give me a job. He didn't just give me this job. Because of the new career that I currently have, God offered us, God gave us, um, managed, um, gave us this particular house you're seeing here. This year, the Lord, as the man of God said, um, it's new beginning. It is a new beginning for us. It is a new beginning. So I actually took that word, that is a new beginning, and we managed, um, this is a current, currently um, we're owning this house. Um, this is our kitchen here. This is my son. This is our kitchen. So we before never... you said you were staying in a rented apartment, even finding it difficult to pay your rent. But today, what happened? It is, this house is, is to God's glory, um, God has given us this house. And because I'm a child of this ministry, I remember Daddy, um, the man of God, always told us that we need to have a house that has... Um, that has a prayer room, you know? So when I, when I was meditating, when I was thinking of a house, I was looking for a house that would actually have a prayer room. And God, God is so amazing, children of God. God is, God is God, God is awesome. He, not only did he just give us a house, but he gave us a house to the specifications that I actually needed. I needed a four bedroom house, and I needed above, above all, I needed a prayer room to worship. According to our Father and the Lord, what he's been teaching us, that we need to align ourselves with God. So um, this particular house has a prayer room that I and my family go and worship God to God's glory. Once again, shall we put our hands together for our Lord Jesus? Yes, we thank God for your life, and we believe that this blessing of God in your life will also draw you closer to God than ever, because the purpose of His blessings in your life is to serve Him, honor Him, and receive instruction from Him. We pray that God Almighty, in His infinite mercy, will grant you the grace to maintain the new life you have received in Jesus' name. We believe that the best is yet to come. Once again, let us put our hands together for our Lord Jesus. Nous voulons entendre le merveilleux témoignage de cette femme qui vient de la Tanzanie. Elle dit qu'elle est venue ici à la synagogue des Outils Nations parce que depuis plus de six ans, elle souffrait justement de stagnation, de régression. Elle avait un travail normal, elle n'avait pas un travail en conséquence par rapport à ce diplôme, qu'elle avait une maîtrise justement en management d'affaires. Management d'affaires. Elle a dit que même les personnes qui étaient au-dessus d'elle étaient des personnes qui étaient sans diplôme, qui n'avaient pas même autant de diplômes qu'elle avait. Elle est venue à la synagogue des Outils Nations. On a pu récupérer l'eau du matin, en priant aussi avec cette eau du matin, cette nouvelle eau du matin, en disant Seigneur, s'il te plaît, donne-moi un travail en conséquence de mes diplômes, un travail à ma hauteur. C'est comme cela qu'un de ses amis, une personne qu'elle servait dans son travail, euh, lui a demandé de donner son CV. C'est un homme français. Et ce français a donné justement son CV à, à un Allemand. Et c'est comme cela qu'on lui a dit qu'on qu voulait qu'elle passe une interview, que quelqu'un justement a, a, a fait un voyage de la Hollande pour venir juste pour l'interviewer en Tanzanie. Et après l'interview, elle a été donnée, ce, ce travail lui a été donné. Et maintenant, elle a dit qu'elle est fière d'être justement euh, directrice de management euh, d'affaires, justement pour le trois pays pour le Kenya, pour l'Ouganda et pour la Tanzanie. Elle s'occupe de la, la construction des, des routes, elle s'occupe de la construction d'aéroports, elle s'occupe aussi de la construction d'hôpitaux. Elle a dit que ce, ce travail donne de rencontrer des ministres 
des gouverneurs, des personnes haut placées, des, des, des secrétaires d'État, etc. C'est-à-dire que vraiment, se trouve au milieu de réunions avec des personnes haut placées, chose qu'elle ne pouvait pas penser auparavant. Mais grâce à l'application de la nouvelle du matin, elle a maintenant obtenu ce travail avec cette grande position. Et non pas seulement ça, le Seigneur aussi lui a donné le, la maison de ses rêves. Elle a pu acheter sa maison. Alors qu'auparavant, elle voit juste un appartement. Elle a maintenant cette grande maison de voyons, cette grande cuisine qu'elle a. Elle a une grande maison de quatre chambres qu'elle a achetée elle-même. Elle avait demandé au Seigneur de donner justement une chambre de prière dans cette maison, chose que le Seigneur lui a donnée. Elle rend toute la gloire à Dieu pour la grâce qu'elle a reçue grâce à la nouvelle du matin. Y escuchamos el maravilloso testimonio de esta mujer que viene de Tanzania. Ella llegó a las con un serio problema de estancamiento en su vida laboral y profesional. Ella estaba orando porque su vida estaba estancada durante muchos años. Durante seis años pedía una promoción que no llegaba. Ella empezó a orar y a rogar a Dios. Finalmente consiguió el nuevo agua de la mañana. El agua de la mañana empezó a orar, se la ministró y al fin llegó el progreso a su vida. A través de un hombre de Francia, su currículum llegó a un hombre de Alemania y su promoción llegó. Ella ahora es directora de, de desarrollos de negocios y trabaja en proyectos muy grandes para tres países, para Uganda, para Tanzania y para Kenia, en construcción de carreteras, aeropuertos, hospitales. Ella se entrevista con hombres importantes, hombres de negocios, ministros, y ahora lleva una vida que, que no podía ni soñar, todo gracias a la oración y la administración del agua de la mañana. Ha podido construir su propia casa donde ha instalado una habitación de oración para pasar tiempo de intimidad con Dios. Ella nos aconseja que, ac que acudamos a Dios porque con Dios todas las cosas son posibles. Y con Continuamos con más maravillosos testimonios. Espectadores, continúen conectados en fe. experiences. God bless you as you watch in Jesus' name. I want to see you. I touch you and I realize there's need to disconnect you. Your upbringing, you, you connect with some a society. Yes, man of God. It's, it's, a, it's a normal thing. You're, that's your area. Now you begin to know that it's not right thing. And that is the cause of trouble between you and your wife. Your wife is always irritated because of the court. This does not want you to have a wife, okay? Okay. There's a Thanks. woman coming to you in the dream. Yes, man of God. Okay? It does not give one this affection. I mean, the, the, the marriage to stand. So I will see you, okay? This is your wife? Yes. Okay? We clap for wonderful Jesus Christ. That was exactly how the prophecy came to being in the life of the couple. And they are coming out right now to share their wonderful testimony. And God bless you as you listen to them in Jesus' name. testimony starting with the prophecy you received here last Sunday um, Emmanuel my name is Joshua Kepu and um, standing next to me is my beautiful wife Lynette Kepu and um, we are both from Australia and we are here to confirm that the uh, prophecy that the man of God has prophesied last week last Sunday it's um, 100% true. Could you just start with the exact prophecy you received and how you can confirm this to be true for your life? Yeah, the prophecy that I received was that, uh, um, that I need to be disconnected from the, um, from the uh, society of um, a cult. Uh, also, I had a, um, a woman coming into my dreams and um, is causing uh, problems in my uh, relationship with my, um, my wife. Um, it, it always uh, it feels like um, there's a wall between me and my wife um, and every time that we try to have a conversation. So um, 
Yeah, I confirmed the prophecy to be true. Uh, explain to us how true it is. Um, I'm, I was born in Samoa, uh, raised in Samoa, and I was and I was moved to New Zealand when I was about 15. And um, about eight years now, we are uh, we are living in Australia. But my upbringing, um, I come from a country where it's um, it's it's only a small small country. But I come from the country that it's uh, strong in the uh, culture and the um, or the tradition. So um, as I was growing up, I always watched my um, my family believing in in God and um, and everything. But I always see as well that that um, they were still doing other things that that doesn't seem right in my eyes. Like, for an example, they, they do massage and, um, you know, and, and, and things like that, things with the needles, um, you know, uh, you, you know, all those sorts of things. When, you know, like now, I, I, you know, when I look back, like, like the man of God said, I, I, I realize now what is the right things, when I look back, I know that these things that I was, I was, um, I was seeing with my own eyes and I was following it and, um, you know, there was a force, force behind everything and, and as I keep growing up, you know, I feel like I'm always, I always feel like I'm, you know, there's always something that is taking me into the wrong directions, um, end up leading me to, um, you know, um, in, into a, um, a, a, um, um, like a, what do you call it, um, witchcraft, you know, um, man, I, I was on my way to my work and I was, I was so pain, uh, had pain in my legs and, um, you know, and this man said to me, oh, look, I can, um, make, make, make the pain go away. And, you know, I was in pain and I was looking for a, a way out. And um, I allowed this man to, to do his thing. And all he did was just run his hands, you know, on, on my leg, you know, from my knees downwards. And he said to me, oh, you know, uh, don't worry, you know, um, you know, you'll be okay. And, um, you know, I wasn't fully paying attention. I was just kind of go with the flow. Okay, now after that initiation, could you just tell us what started happening in your life? Yeah, what, what started happening is I started seeing um, these shadows coming into, um, into my bedroom, you know, where my wife was. And I was, I was, in, I was shocked, you know, I was, I was a bit worried because I couldn't see, I couldn't see the, the shadow. You know, till later I ask God, you know, please show me what it, what it is that I'm, what I'm seeing. I can't see, you know, these forces that are coming. You know, it was just nothing, you know. All I can tell was a force there, but I couldn't see. So, you know, I thank God, you know, God actually showed me, you know. Uh, I see like three shadows coming into my bed, you know, and, you know, it's trying to hold me down, you know, and, and yeah. And, you know, see a woman, you know, coming into, in my dreams. And, um... Yeah, and, and every time I try to pray against this, you know, it seems to get, you know, worse and worse, you know. I've, I've, I see myself sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm walking around the, the pool, you know, with a, like a swimming pool with all these beautiful ladies, and I have no idea what it is. Okay, now tell us how this actually affected your marriage. Um, well, they kind of like a, put a, a wall between me and my wife. Um, you know, God has done a lot in, in our marriage, but I always feel like there was one thing that wasn't right um, in, in, you know, in my relationship with my wife. I feel like every time we, we try to talk to each other, there's always, there's always a disagreement or, or an argument over, over little things. So it really, really, you know, affects us in that area. Um, and you know, we're starting to feel like you know we we don't really really have that love. You know, we kind of like you know we live in one house, but you know my wife, you know, always we have a two-story house. My wife always sleep in the sitting room, you know, doing everything in the other room, and I'll be you know upstairs in my own room, you know, doing my own thing. So it's just kind of going that way. Okay, now tell us how you discovered Emmanuel TV. Um, 
in, in time when I was going through these, these problems about four, five years ago, you know, and I was just, you know, looking for a way out and, you know, I'm just asking, you know, God, that I, you know, I, I want to change my life. And then somehow I went on YouTube and, you know, on my phone and I saw Emmanuel TV and I saw everything that the man of God was, Prophet T.P. Joshua was doing. And I said to myself, oh, you know, God, God is real. You know, I never seen this, I never seen this healing and, and deliverance before. And I, I said to myself, this is real, you know, I, I have to, you know, and I keep watching it, keep watching it, you know, and, you know, I said to myself, you know, from that time, I want to come, I want to come here, I want to come here, you know, but, I, you know, and, and somehow when I talk to my wife about it, you know, my wife always think um, that I've been deceived, um, you know, that, that everything here is so, so lies, so, you know, it, it, it keeps going, it keeps going like that for a long time. Mm. Finally, when you came, what happened that brought about your freedom today? Uh, finally, I'm here and I'm blessed. We are both blessed. Um, you know, the man of God is a real man of God. You know, there's no doubt about that. Everything that we see with our own eyes here, you know, it's a real... Yeah, after the um, deliverance, you know, um, my, my wife and I, you know, my wife can't stop looking at me, so... <laughs> yeah, so we're enjoying every time, you know, every moment that we're having together, you know, we feel that, you know, our love, you know, has really come strong, you know, um, yeah, after our deliverance, so thank God. Okay, after your deliverance as a person, do you still see the shadow, the, the, the woman, does she still come to you in the dream? Can you confirm that you're free? I'm free. Uh, I don't see it anymore. I know Jesus is in control in my life and my wife and my family. So, praise God. Glory to Jesus. That is not enough for Jesus Christ. Put your hands together beautifully for the miracle working God. And finally, what word of advice do you have for all who are listening to you? Um, you know, wherever you are, you know, around the world, you know, you're watching this. I tell you, Jesus is the only way. You know, um, if you've been trying everything else and it doesn't work for you, try Jesus. You know, he will never fail you. Um, you know. Thank you very much. Let's quickly listen to your wife. Yeah, madam, uh, tell us your name, who is the man next to you, and your own side of the testimony. My name is Lynette Kepu, and the man standing next to me is my husband, Yosua Kepu, and we are from Australia, Melbourne. Um, last Sunday, the man of God located my husband and had a word, a prophecy for him, and um, I confirm that the prophecy is absolutely correct. He prophesied that uh, there's a spiritual spouse in my husband's dream that pursues him, um, which is causing... Uh, marriage or marriage conflicts between us and that's absolutely uh, correct. Before coming to the SCOAN, uh, we were struggling in our marriage. Um, every time I'd speak to my husband, there's always a war and a barrier. I felt like the affection between us was starting to go. As he explained, he'll sleep upstairs and I'll have my room downstairs. Um, and I just didn't want to be near him. It's like there was it's like there was a force or something that was just keeping us apart. And um, the man of God uh, uh, prophesies this and I just can't believe it. Okay, after the prophecy, what are the changes you can confirm in your marriage? Oh, I feel that we are beginning to be more one. Um, we are, I'm able to speak to my husband now without the barrier and the blockage, whereas before I wouldn't want to speak to him about things that I needed to talk to him as a husband about. I'll just go off and do my own stuff. And he also said that when he would watch Emmanuel TV, um, I'll tell him to stop watching it. I'll tell him, don't watch that stuff. It's witchcraft. Um, I liaise with some Nigerian friends of mine in Australia, and they told me, yeah, no, T.P. Joshua is fake. Tell your husband to stop watching it. And so I'm here to tell the man of God that I apologize that he is absolutely not fake. He is a man of God. And you have to come and see for yourself. 
And because the anointing and the presence as he has, for someone to know what is happening in the spirit and to, to tell my husband that there is a spiritual uh, lady pursuing him in his dreams, only a spirit of God can know that. Let's clap for wonderful Jesus Christ. And finally, what word of advice do you have for all who are listening to you? Your advice. Don't be deceived. Uh, don't just hear what people are telling you, but come seek for yourself and know that God is the only way and that T.P. Joshua is the true man of God. Amen. <laughs> we thank God for your lives. And as you go and make the word of God a stand up for your lives, we pray your miracle will remain permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Nous voulons entendre la merveille de témoignage de ce couple qui vient de l'Australie. L'homme est originaire de, de, de l'île de Samoa. Il a dit qu'il a grandi justement dans l'île de Samoa pour avoir reçu le, justement la prophétie en lui disant qu'il voyait qu'il y avait une femme spirituelle qui perturbait son mariage, son mariage et qu'il n'avait pas d'affection entre lui et sa femme. Il confirme que cela est vrai car euh, en, étant jeune, il a grandi dans l'île de Samoa. Il y a beaucoup de traditions avant qu'il ne, ne bouge pour aller s'installer en Australie. Et effectivement, il a dit qu'il a vécu beaucoup de traditions où sa famille adorait beaucoup d'autres choses à part le fait d'être chrétien de croire en Dieu, beaucoup de, de choses avec des piqûres, des aiguilles, faisant toutes sortes de traditions. Il a dit qu'il a gardé cela en tête, ce qui a affecté aussi sa vie. Il a dit que pour confirmer ce que l'homme de Dieu dit, qui est vrai, il a dit qu'avec sa femme, il n'y avait pratiquement euh, pas de relation. Il y avait vraiment comme un mur, comme l'homme de Dieu l'a dit, entre lui et sa femme, que effectivement lui, il dormait à l'étage et que la femme dormait justement euh, pas au sol, euh, dans le premier étage, et lui était deuxième étage. Ils dormaient dans une chambre séparée, il n'y avait plus de connexion avec eux, il faisait ce qu'elle avait à faire et lui faisait ce qu'il avait à faire. La femme aussi confirme qu'il n'y avait pas d'affection, qu'elle ne lui parlait pratiquement plus de, de ses besoins de femme. Mais effectivement, après la prophétie de l'homme de Dieu aujourd'hui, il a dit qu'ils sont vraiment réconciliés, qu'ils peuvent maintenant s'écouter, que l'amour est revenu entre eux, que l'unité est là entre eux, que l'affection est revenue, qu'ils rendent toute la gloire à Dieu. Et la femme disait que lorsque son mari regardait mal la télévision, lorsqu'il était en Australie, il disait tout le temps d'éteindre et la télévision, que cela est de la sorcellerie. Mais aujourd'hui, elle demande, elle demande pardon à l'homme de Dieu, disant aussi qu'elle croit maintenant que l'homme de Dieu était l'homme de Dieu, qu'un seul esprit de Dieu pouvait savoir ce que se passe dans leur couple, rend toute la gloire à Dieu. Y escuchamos este maravilloso testimonio de esta pareja que viene de Australia. Eh, él recibió una profecía del hombre de Dios, el profeta Tevilloso, hace dos semanas que decía eh, tienes que desconectarte de una sociedad secreta, de ese culto secreto, porque esto está causando problemas en tu matrimonio. Tú ves una mujer en tus sueños. Ellos están hoy aquí, confirman la profecía. Él dice que viene de una tradición eh, muy fuerte en su familia. Ellos son de Australia y que en su familia no hay cristianos. Eh, él empezó a ver en Manuel TV en un momento dado de su vida porque él había sido introducido en este culto y empezó a ver la realidad de Cristo en acción eh, dos semanas atrás cuando estuvo aquí recibió la, prof la profecía eh, reconocen que había problemas en el matrimonio que había un muro entre ellos que incluso estaban llevando vidas separadas durmiendo en habitaciones separadas a través de la profecía Dios les ha liberado y están aquí para darle la gloria a Dios han recuperado su vida matrimonial están gozosos disfrutando como matrimonio y él nos recomienda que Cristo es la única solución y el único camino y que creamos en él porque en Cristo están todas las respuestas. Damos gloria a Dios por este maravilloso testimonio. Continuamos. standing beside you before you go ahead and tell us about your testimony. People of God, Emmanuel. Everybody shout, Emmanuel. My name is Wilfred Makombeze from Maputo, Mozambique. The lady sitting uh, next to me is my daughter, Nils Zanalia, and next here is my wife, Doreen Makombeze. We are the happiest family here in front of you. We are here to glorify the name of God because of what God did to us. Our testimony goes like this. Our daughter Nilza, next to me, she had asthma, chronic asthma, very strong asthma since she was born, at a very tender age. She suffered from asthma, and we could hear her breathe five meters away from our bedroom. We could not sleep. We wake up, we take the baby, we bath her, she is cold, she is hot. We don't know what to do next. We pray, we don't know what to do next. And we went to hospital with the, with the baby and she grew up with asthma. 
It was like a, a daily. It was like every time. Three, months, I mean, three times per month. Even it could just happen just like that. Unpredictable. We don't know what to do. So we went to hospital and the, to no avail. We went also to the herbalist to no avail. And some, some, med, some herbalist told us it was a male imagine it was a male asthma so we have to do something it was a female asthma we have to do something and the most the most the most the most shocking when one of the herbalists told us to hold on a chameleon we open the mouth of a chameleon so that she can split into that chameleon so that the disease would be swallowed by the chameleon that was very ter terrifying now as parents we had sleepless nights we concentrating on the girl. The girl is useless. She's just like, uh, we don't know what is going to happen next. We don't know if we're going to have our baby next. Come time when she was going to school, she could not do anything in school. She could not even uh, participate in sports. At times she would miss lessons. At times she would be at home. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I'm, uh, I'm the owner. we are the owners of the school where our children go to study. Imagine you are playing with other kids and your own child is at home. Mm -hmm. She's at home, she's not at school. So it was very terrifying for us. Mm. So if we have given you time, you have gone on and on and on describing the crisis your daughter went through as a result of this terrible asthma she suffered. Can you just tell us in a nutshell how many years did she suffer this problem of chronic asthma? For 13 years. Mm. So how did God Almighty bring about the miraculous healing in her life? After we had tried everything to no avail, the mother took her here to Snagogo Church of All Nations when she was prayed for and she had opportunity to receive anointing water and she took it back to Mozambique and we prayed with her and we spray anointing water on her and yes and a new anointing water in her and since that the problem stopped all of a sudden it stopped just like that That clap is not enough for Jesus. If you know Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, put your hands together louder, I say, for the miracle working God. Who could have justly done this? Asthma of 13 years, that uh, according to the father, she said the daughter became useless as she could not do anything on her own. Just a prayer from the anointed man of God, Prophet TV Joshua, and the ministration of the new morning water, the asthma became a thing of the past. If you know that Jesus, the miracle worker, is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and whatever situation you may be having today that is more than able to see you through, shall we put our hands together, loud I say, for the miracle. Miracle, miracle, miracle working God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give glory to God Almighty. I mean, not that uh, there will be further proofs uh, to, to, to show the world that your daughter is now healed of this problem of asthma because we know that saying only what God says will produce and increase our faith. So, can you just tell us what is on the board that we are seeing next to you? Your mother. Give me the microphone. <laughs> tell us what is on the board that we are seeing next to you. Emmanuel, the first medical report from the hospital, as you can see here, it states that she has a chronic asthma, very heavy asthma since she was a child. And the next medical report here confirms that she is now free from this disease. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give glory to God Almighty. So we now want to hear from your daughter, uh, the person in question. What do you have to say concerning what God has done in your life? You can have the mic. Emmanuel. Good morning, church. My father has said it all. Your name? I used to start from this. My name is Neil Zama Gombeze. I'm from Mozambique. Okay. The people standing beside me are my parents.